Hello again. I have had a special request from Lady Jane G to do a video showing where I and how I organize all my paper bits and ephemera and things that I use when I'm doing glue books. Now, I do more than glue books, as you probably know if you've been following me at all. I'm a watercolor artist and I'm also an acrylic artist. I don't have a huge space. I don't have a huge home. So I fit things in where I can and I'm used to working kind of with my elbows in because of my limited space. However, I have to be organized and I've managed to do that, I think. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about how I organize my paper things primarily. And I, I usually do watercolors and glue books and whatnot at the same in the same location because I have a huge antique drafting table that I use, that I stand up at and work at that. So these things overlap a little bit. I actually do my canvas painting in a different room. That's for another video. In the meantime, let me show you around a little bit and you can see how I've got things organized. I thought I would start with kind of an overview. This room is not a separate room. It's actually just off my kitchen and was supposed to be a family room. You can see the um, bookshelves behind here. They act as a divider and I've got a lot of books because I'm also a writer and I'm an avid reader. So I, that kind of divides this space from the kitchen and everything that goes on there. I've set it up to kind of basically use every square inch to start with. And I'm sorry the light isn't perfect in here because you can see my big overhead lights and my camera that I use when I'm doing top down filming. But the rest of this space looks like this. And so to start with, I have this huge drawer unit that was, um, I got three actually, when an old church was being torn down and it had been built in the room that it was in. So we had to cut it in half. You can see probably a line along the left-hand side there where it was sawed in half to get it out of that room and get it into my house. And this is where I keep all my watercolor supplies, my big paper sheets, and all my original watercolors. And on top here, this, by the way, this vase is full of rocks so that my books don't go flying off there. These are all illustrated books that I've collected over the years. Lots of my favorite artists and authors. And then on the table here, I've got mostly watercolor things, but also glues and uh, paint brushes and scissors and so there's a bit of overlap as you can see because there's some odds and ends of paint brushes here these are for acrylics and I've got just everything kind of in here but the main thing is I know where everything is up on top of this shelf unit, which is actually um, made for putting shoes in your closet, what was perfect for this spot, I have inks and pens and my little figure there. My lighting, as you can see, is I've got a couple of these soft boxes, also a couple of spotlights and an overhead light that has a magnifying glass in it. So here's my table. This is the remote for the lights, which I just left there. Down here, I have my watercolors, and underneath, I've got canvases that I intend to paint. But up here, I have pens and, well, all kinds of things. Colored pencils, I've used those quite a bit. I've got um, these little containers are really handy. And what I do is try to organize things by containers. So these, for example, are my watercolor brushes. This is water. This is watercolor. This is, this is for watercolors. This is my glue, which is kind of dried out. I need to buy new stuff. And then I use all these little pails and containers to sort and organize all the other things that I need, which includes 
things like glitter and glue and markers. And some of those are oil paint markers. I've got vinyl gloves in there. I've got basically odds and ends glasses. And then I have a little mouse who keeps me company. I also have in here washi tapes. These are, are colored stamp pads. I've got the glue I often use. And and then more stamp pads for distressing edges. Well, there's where that thing went. This is for my scissors. Uh, you'll probably wonder why there's a pair of pink gloves here. It's because I wanted I'm one of the things I want to do is work more with chalk pastels and use something like that for blending. I've got some little watercolor cases in, in the little pink pail. I've got a fan because when I work under the lights, quite often I get really hot. I've also got a little container here. Sometimes it's a little chaotic. It's got just small things, clips and brads and whatnot. And this is glue. I'll just put somewhere else. And then you can see the bookshelves around behind. And I've got got large sheets of foam core board and things like that hiding behind here. Basically, every square inch of our house is used. Here is the, and you probably recognize the pink pad that I use. And over here, this is much neater than it generally looks. So in this container, I've got all kinds of larger pieces of paper that I've cut out of different, um, not magazines so much, but calendars. There's a lot of calendars and there's some old, old book pages that I use and some tissue paper. I also have uh, a hair, it's actually a hair appliance, but it works as a, a heat dryer to dry watercolors quickly. Here I have pieces, this is the tissue paper that I use when I don't want to get glue on everything. And these are pieces of watercolor for when I try different paints and different effects. I want to see what it looks like. You can see here I've, I had uh, gold paint, watercolor paint, and I've tried some different odds and ends there. So I just keep those handy because I might need them sometime. In this little spot here, I have this box, this little basket. I keep my pan pastels in there. I only have a few because this is something that's sort of new to me. And I had to kind of stack these because I'm so limited with space. And in this case, I have markers of all kinds. And let me just do this with one hand. These are our gelatos and, and water-soluble gel markers. And these are usually mostly double-ended different kinds of art markers and then in this unit here I have watercolor paper I have a tracing uh, desk that has a light in it I've got odds and ends of ephemera pieces bigger things I have ribbons I have cardstock which we'll be talking about again in a minute down here I've got some tissue paper and just some bigger things and then in the bottom I've got acrylic paints and then some more uh, canvases and pictures here my old stool which I don't really sit on very much but I can if I want to usually what happens it's as you can see it's kind of it's been falling apart for a long time when my granddaughter comes and wants to do crafts that's when I usually get it out because then she can sit on it when I stand. Now behind my desk, I have more storage on the shelves and I'll show you those in a minute. Plus I've got these two boxes have watercolor things and sketchbooks and I've got my cutter. I've got a sketchbook here that I use. It's more of a, an art journal. And this binder is what I've use what I've created for my ephemera to hold and I'll show you what that looks like and how it works. Up here I have watercolor projects and watercolor sets and little things that don't actually go up here but got stuck there. There's some watercolor pencils in there 
and some little sketchbooks and watercolor sets like that. And then up above that, I've got, this is a little set of pieces that I got, which I use in, in my videos um this is my my little printer and I'll, I'll just put this over here so i can show it to you and then up here i've got this is left over from when i had a wholesale business i had um, all my art on shopping list pads and that was a display unit that i used so it was perfect for this space so i keep books and sketchbooks and this is one of my books i've mentioned before um, you can find that on Amazon. And um, by the way, I have 29 books in print on Amazon. So if you want to look me up, um, that would be lovely. And next to this, I've got some drawer units that I picked up just at a little local department store. Um, I've got ephemera. This is kind of a sticky one, but I've got butterflies and odds and ends in there. In here, I have things for making seals. So there's the sealing wax and the stamps and that sort of thing. Sorry if I, I'm trying to do different things with my hands here. I hope that I didn't mess that up too much. Over here, I've got rubber stamps or basically the plastic ones. I don't know what they're, they're made out of, but there's lots of them there. The kind that need to have the block. And then the ink pads there. These tubs are really handy. So I've got cutters and some rubber stamps in there. And then up here, uh, I've got this little metal basket, which is left over from the store I used to have. I've got some glitter here. I've got some more art books up here. And then here I've got some more uh, of the water soluble crayons, which are great. There's two sets there to all different colors and then this is really handy and I would recommend something like this and I just bought this at TJ Maxx winners in Canada home sense um, those, that kind of place you can usually find them in the cosmetics or the storage departments but they're great for keeping little pieces of ephemera in so for example I can just pull this out turn around and use it on my my desk as I'm working on a project. Here is some um, antique books and some books that I've taken pictures out of and some of the project books that I've been working on. For example, this little magazine one. This is the travel journal size that I've worked on quite a bit. Let me get my camera in the right place here. And that sort of thing. I'm going to switch over to my other camera now and show you how I put together the binder to keep track of more little things and the boxes for bigger sheets. So let's do that now. Okay, as promised, this is a little cosmetic bag. Um, and this is my little Instax printer. So how this works, this is just to charge it up, but it works uh, with through an app in my phone. I haven't used it as much as I thought I would, but I I love it and I wanted I actually want to do more of that. I thought I would use it more in journals and I just kind of never got a, around to it. I got it for a gift a couple of Christmases ago and uh, I love the concept of it, but it's easy to use, you know, with the app you just choose your picture. It's pretty self-explanatory. Here we have the binder where I keep a lot of my things. It's about time that I got a, a one with, that's wider. How I made this is with these kind of sheets. Now this is just a page cover. So I started with that. I slipped in a piece of cardstock like this. And then I took it to my sewing machine and sewed one line here, one line here, and one line here. And then I cut it below the line that I've sewed so that it made a pocket. And these ones automatically make pockets because it's open on top. And I did it in this sort of format so that it could have, uh, I could have the longer pieces and the bigger pieces here. Um, I used to do more, more junk journals than I do glue books, but then I kind of moved into glue books, which I find a little bit more fun and 
partly because they're they have no purpose. A junk journal, you kind of want to journal in it, but I never did. So I um I just find the glue books just fun to make. When I get a bunch of stickers like I did with these, I'll, I'll put try and keep them kind of grouped together, so that if I'm looking for something specific, then I like I know where to get it. So these are sort of size planned. These are um, ones that I found on the internet and just either cut them out or designed them or whatever. And then I've got some stuff like this, which is a tag. These ones are ones that are in my store. They have the cupcake ones. And so are these ones. So go to summerbasestudio.com to find those if you're interested. There's a whole lot more there. And then I've got some some washi stickers here and some other pieces that I just found on the internet. This is, These are washi stickers as well, look like stamps. And then I ordered these online. They're see-through flower ones. You can buy ephemera pieces as stickers mostly in lots of places. And like, for example, this one is a print. It's just a printable I found. These ones actually had a bunch of them in here and I moved them all over to that Lucite drawer so that all those little, little um, label ones were there together. And then on the big sheets, I have bigger pieces. Now, I really don't have a plan for these, but because I have, well, let me show you. Because I have a book this size and other sketchbooks that I could use pieces like this in. For example, you can see behind here, there's there's some old, uh, um, some vintage paper pieces like this. And then I painted over it and, you know, did the whole painting because I wanted to try some things and then I added some glitter and all that kind of stuff. So this is done with pan pastels. This is more um, glue book, multimedia kind of thing. And uh, same here. So I just, I use this to try things. These are the, um, the water soluble crayons. And this is a combination of the pan pastel. So I'm getting a little bit off track here, but when you've got a book this size, that means you can use bigger pieces. So I could start out with one of these big pieces that I've cut from books. And where I've got a lot of these from is from illustrated books that I bought at secondhand bookstores. You know, they're books I don't necessarily want to keep, but they have nice illustrations. And then I've just cut them out with these nice little sharp scissors. These are from EK Success. And I I really like those because they have really sharp points and they, they're sharp right to the end. So I just cut them out while I'm watching TV and that's why I have so much because I basically do more than one thing at a time. You can see some of these and I've, I have some of them kind of, these are big florals. These are mostly birds and they're from like a lot of them are from Edith Holden's books and I, I just bought a, any one that I could get my hands on so I didn't feel bad about cutting them up. And then some of these came from calendars again and then the, this is from garden books where they have great big things and this is from an old book I had from the 1970s about Chinese art. As you can see the, it gets kind of lumpy here but I need to get a thicker binder to deal with all of these. But that gives you an idea of how you can keep things so you can see them. So what I would do with this then is just take it to my sewing machine and do some more pages like that. And and it's very handy because it keeps everything neat. The only tricky part is don't ever turn it this way, otherwise stuff will start sliding out. So when I pick it up, I try to always to lift it up first and pick it up this way so that everything stays in their little slippery pockets. Now here's another system that I, I've used. I, I don't know, I think I watched somebody's YouTube channel and got this idea, or somewhere. Anyway, these little trays are available at dollar stores and they're, you know, a dollar. And so, and so are these. I got those at my local dollar store. So what I've done with these is like tiny things go in these little boxes. These are the tiniest. The, these are just a little bit bigger, so I get things like that. These are a little bit bigger again, so I get, you know, stuff like that. That way, if I have a little space, I don't have to search through all kinds of things to get a little piece of ephemera that will work in that tiny space, because 
these ones will do that. They're already pre-sorted. So if I need something for a corner, for example, I already know where to look for that. And then these, of course, are a little bit bigger again. And these ones are actually stickers. I don't remember where I got them, but I like them, so I keep them. And then I cut these out of Cicely Mary Barker's books. A lot of them had them on both sides, which is kind of a shame because if I choose this one, it means I lose this one. But they're so pretty and they, they make such nice decorations. And then there's little things like this I could actually cut out around that little grouping or just use that. And uh, so there's lots of things that are usable here. And then I found another book that had the rhymes on one side and the art on the other, which are they're a little bit bigger. So that's handy. And then just some odds and ends of things I stuck in here. So that's that one for the little ones. And then these ones, um, I used to have a little bit of a plan going with them, but mostly I just started to throw things in together. I've got things like like birthday cards, vintage ones especially, and then things like this that I've cut out of something along the way. And in here there's also a paper pack that I bought somewhere. And same here, pages that I picked up. These are, are 3D stickers and just different pieces, little kits like this that, you know, I found somewhere. Oh, these are nice. Oh, these are washi. I've kind of forgotten about these. I think I'm going to have to put them somewhere else so that I don't forget they exist. Yeah, I think I'll put them in my binder. And then also um, more pieces in here. So some of these I printed. I just found them online and printed them off and cut them out. Uh, this is one that I painted. And the great thing about these is that they just nest in together. They take up a lot less space that way. And you could do like stacks of them and just have this one with all the other little things in there. And if you wanted, you could even label them like col by color or by size or by theme or whatever you wanted. And then just be able to look at the end and say, oh, okay, uh, there's blue winter scenes or however you wanted to do it. Another thing that I've done is somewhere along the way, I've acquired these kind of storage boxes. These ones have the bigger pieces and the kits that I've got somewhere. This is like magazine pages from an art magazine. Um, just a lot of things and I just kind of pop everything in there. I've got some some birthday cards, you know, Mother's Day, because they often have such such pretty things on them. And these I could cut off and use for trim. And these ones, of course, have sparkly around the edges of the roses and that sort of thing. So there's that big one. And then I've got some flat ones that, again, I acquired somewhere along the way. And and these are also, you know, places where I just store things. So this is, these are some pages that I did at some point in the past, um, just as I was kind of moving towards glue book projects. And these ones actually are a separate glue book that they have both sides done. And then... I've got the the um, cutter that makes these little uh, things for for binders with those rings. Let me just see if I can grab that. So these little rings fit into those spaces when you're when it's cut properly. And this is the punch that came from Happy Planner. That's another thing that you can do with your projects if you want to work on them just a page at a time and put them together in a book later. So like you can see this one, I did the back, the front. Now I could just put them in here, punch the holes, pop them into the book with this. And if you get bigger ones, you can just keep making your book bigger and bigger. So there's lots of options with that. Here's a project I did one Christmas with paint and glitter and glue and all kinds of things. There's so many things that you can do. It's just kind of endless and you know a lot of it you think well what's the purpose of that I would say does it have to have one because sometimes it's just doing something that makes you happy and you're creating something pretty or whatever here's some more pages that I found I think I tore these out of a magazine 
Um, some of them I printed from the off the internet that I actually bought the rights to to print like these old letters and I forget where I got them uh, might have been Etsy not really sure but there's lots of papers in there too so I could do this for a very long time I'm not sure that I will because sometimes you just need a change of scenery but we'll see as you can see, I've developed a few different ways to store all these little bits and pieces. And it's so fun to collect them. And then it's fun to use them. Please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so you get the notifications when I have a new video. And leave a comment. Tell me how you store your things. And if you got anything out of this, if you got some ideas, uh, I would love that. And also click the like button because that tells the algorithm that uh, this is a video worth watching. And I'll see you next time.